I'm back in the UK. I've been living in Pattaya, Thailand for six months now, and I don't regret any of it. In this video, I'll detail the lessons that I learned, the experiences that I had, and why I have eventually returned home. Which initially just was for Christmas, but I'm actually ending up staying here indefinitely. So let's start off with some of the lessons that I learned from living in Thailand. I've never lived outside of the UK before, and this is my first time, so traveling halfway around the world uh, to a different country completely on my own was a bit daunting, but I definitely learned a lot about myself and if you're thinking of doing the same, I would highly recommend it. But to get straight into it, I wanna go over my first point, which is the fact that Thailand is not as cheap as you think. Now, Thailand is a cheap place to live. I was in an apartment for 250 pound a month rent, which was a beachside apartment all to myself. And the condo that I was in had great amenities, you know, sauna, steam room, swimming pool, rooftop swimming pool. It had quite a lot and the area was quite nice, especially being right next to the beach. Food wise, there is quite a lot of cheap food around, especially if you're eating at Thai local restaurants, you can be getting a meal for one to two pound. And amongst other things in Thailand, it is generally a very cheap place when you compare it to the West. Now, here's the trap where you think that everything is cheap, so then you just increase the volume of those things that you consider cheap. So if you think that eating out is really cheap, you end up doing it more, and then you end up eating at better restaurants, and then suddenly the price starts mirroring what you would have at home because back in the West, you maybe only eat out two, three times a week or so. Whereas in Thailand, you start to kind of shift where every single meal you're eating out. Then these meals become the, oh, it's really cheap, so I'll have a starter. Oh, it's really cheap, so I'll have a dessert. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna get a nice smoothie with it uh, and stuff like this. And all of a sudden, that it the price does creep up. Like I said, the price is probably never gonna mirror the West, but the fact is that when you do this so often that it can just get a little bit pricey. And let's consider other things. If you're a drinker and you like to have a beer, you know, of an evening, you know, coming uh, in the UK, you could be paying five pound or so for a pint. And in Thailand, you know, you can get some as cheap as like one pound 50 for a pint. And the problem comes when you just think it's so cheap, I'm gonna have so much. So the volume increases and the price just starts to creep up. Now, this is the same for so many things in Thailand. So if you are someone who you're coming to Thailand and you're trying to budget effectively and thinking, well, okay, I'll have this much for food, you know, this much for entertainment, um, really, really bolt on a huge percentage to that because the how cheap everything is, you just start to do things more. Now, albeit if you are spending money on these cheap things and you're doing loads of things daily, you're going to live a better, more luxurious life. So yes, it's not to say that you're going to do all these things and you're spending all this money and increasing your volume of these activities and things that it's good, you're going to be worse off. You're going to probably live a better life. But I'm just saying in terms of budgeting, that is something that, uh, that I learned and it's something that you need to consider. Now, the second point I wanna talk about is actually something that's quite serious and it has affected a lot of people a lot more than it did for me. And that is to not fall into the trap of getting addicted to attention. Now, this does kind of appeal to mostly to people who are going on nights out or if you're having some drinks or you're having some beers quite often of an evening, you're gonna be around some of the bars, yeah, like I was in Pattaya, whether, wherever you are in Thailand, if you go to some of these bars, there are gonna be the women there. And also there's gonna be other guys there as well, which you'll probably get on with. Now, I personally got sucked into this for around about two months, uh, and it's a very hard place to get out of. And this does tie into my kind of previous point where uh, stuff in Thailand is very cheap. Now, what I mean by the addiction to attention is the dopamine rush that you get on these nights out. Whether you're going to a bar, uh, if you're just going with a friend or you're going on your own, you're gonna have the women around you, you know, serving you drinks and you're maybe gonna have a laugh with some of the ladies, maybe you're like play some bar games or so with them and generally have a good time. Of course, the different bars and places you go, the different atmosphere and things kind of happen. But generally, wherever you go out on a night out in Thailand, even if you go to a very quiet bar, you're probably gonna get some attention from the ladies. To be honest, it's their job 
to facilitate you to look after you and so you have a good night so they're going to serve you drinks they're going to make sure you're having a good time you know you're going to have a laugh and a lot of these women are really good looking as well so when they're making a fuss of you and you know you're even if you're walking bar past all these bars it is their job and it's their business to get you into that bar so they're going to call you every you know handsome man everything like that uh, they're going to call you everything under the sun and the thing is you know that it's their job and you know that that it's not kind of authentic they're not sitting there saying you, you're, the, you're the love of my life or you know even if they say oh that like handsome man I come into my bar you know that they're, they're going to say that to everyone that walks past no matter how they look but it's that dopamine rush of attention which just you know it makes you feel good whether it's fake or not you know it feels good now I'm not saying I got addicted to the women and I was always out you know on, on the lookout for new women or anything like that it was more so just the attention tension and, and the the fact that when you go out you're gonna meet people you're gonna have conversations you're gonna play games and you're gonna have a good night it's very rare that you go out to any of these bars and you come home and you say well that was a bad night and that's what I'm getting at that dopamine rush of when you have like a good night out and then hey even if you go to some of the clubs and everything then yeah your night could go wherever but the addiction comes when you actually get home and it's the next day so the next day you're going about doing what you're doing, yeah, whatever. And by the time 8 p.m. rolls around and you think, what do I do with my evening? And because Thailand is such like an accessible place, every single day is a Saturday night in Thailand. It could be a Tuesday evening and you could go out to the bars and they are packed. There is so many women. There's, every, you know, every day is a Saturday. You know, the night never sleeps. So what I'm getting at is when you have that high dopamine rush of like a night out where you've had such a good time and the next day where you're sitting there and you think, well, you, whenever you have a high dopamine rush, the next day you're typically going to have a low, you know, so let's say this typically happens when you go on holiday or something where you have a big high or, or then you go see a family member you haven't seen in a while and you go have a really good time. The next day you might feel a bit bummed out. And that's just generally how dopamine works. It comes in waves. Now, when you're at home at 8 p.m. Uh, after having a night out the previous night and you think, oh, you know what? Well, every day is a Saturday in Thailand. It is very cheap to go out and have a night out. You could go out with 20 pound in your pocket, you know, a thousand bar or so, and you could have a really good night for hours. Now, when that's on your doorstep and it's so accessible, you could just whip out your phone, book a bulk taxi, and you know, 10 minutes down the road, it'll cost you 40 bar or one pound, one dollar, and you're there and everything is just like, here's a fun fact. Now there is around about 2,500 bars in Pattaya alone. This is just Pattaya. So if you think of like even Phuket and Bangkok and everything, like there is loads of bars everywhere. So the fact that it's so accessible, it always plays on your mind. I could either sit here and just, you know, chill out and just, I don't know, watch Netflix or just prepare for the next day or anything. Or in, or five minutes down the road, you could be out into the bars uh, on a cheap night out, you know, and like my last point, all these cheap things, the more you do them, the more they get expensive. So yeah, eventually, uh, I mean, I was going out maybe like four times a week. Now, I'm not someone for going to these bars and bar finding girls and taking girls or paying for girls or anything like that. I just, like I said, I loved the attention and I liked just having a good time at these bars. So uh, sometimes I would rock up at these bars on my own and then yeah, see a girl, make friends, maybe play a few games of pool, maybe play some of the old dice game, buy her a drink or two. And then, yeah, I'd go on my way, maybe to another bar, maybe to a club or so. And then, yeah, call my night. But then the more I was doing this, the more that that dopamine wave was just continually there and I would start to get a bit lonely. At the start of this point, I said that this has affected people more than others. And some people have gotten into a real like a pit of where they can't function without a night out. And then all of a sudden it leads to them always needing alcohol. And then you know where that road goes. Many people say like Pattaya and some of the popular tourist cities in Thailand are like heaven and hell combined. They are heaven because you, everything's so accessible. You can have anything you want in this city. Uh, and it's also hell because you could lose everything. But anyway, quite a long point, but it's something to really consider when you're in that moment and you're sitting there, you've had a night out, and then the next day you're feeling like, oh, you're that FOMO, you're, the fear of missing out. You feel like, oh, I really want to go out because I want to experience the night. 
just think to yourself, am I in a dopamine loop? Um, and always bring yourself back down to earth. And when you actually go, say, no, I'm not going to go for a night out and you have that early night, you watch Netflix, you wake up the next day and you feel absolutely amazing. And then slowly that craving to go out will subside. And then this leads me on to my next point, which is it's okay to do nothing. Now, I knew this myself, but I actually heard it kind of vocalized by uh, Gonna Drift, Sammy uh, and Keys One. Like them two was on a video uh, not too long ago speaking about how it's hard to snap out of holiday mode. So when you've come to Thailand on holiday, I've done it three times before, and it's easy to just, you know, if you spend money, it doesn't matter because soon I'm gonna go home and everything's gonna be okay. I'll, I'll kind of shuffle back into my job and I'll start earning a Western wage again and everything will be fine. Now, when you actually come to live here, you understand that you really need to snap out of that holiday mode quick. You can't go out partying all the time. You can't go and eat at these really nice restaurants. You can't have a massage every day. You can't go to that rooftop bar uh, all the time. So you have to kind of bring yourself back down to earth and realize that you have to start budgeting. So switching from holiday mode to living mode is a hard thing to do. And it took me about a month and a half uh, and I was spending a lot of money. I was going out very often. Uh, and yeah, it just was a very pricey month and a half. But this is my point is that it's okay to do nothing. It really is. So if you're thinking you're home alone and it's like 8 p.m., you're thinking, oh, right, I'm, I'm in Thailand, I should be doing something. Yeah. And that's what you can get sucked into the trap of doing is just thinking that you need to be doing something. When, you know, if you was like life back home and you're living back home, there'd be many nights where you're not doing anything. You're just sitting, lounging, watching the TV. And I think that's something to remember. You might be living in Thailand and Thailand has so many amazing things to do, but sometimes it's okay to do nothing. And if you normalize that, you start to save money, you start to become more grounded. Now, my next point is something that no matter how many times I say this, it's gonna go in one ear and out the other for pretty much majority of you. And that's not to wear your heart on your sleeve, especially if you're going to like the bars and everything like that. Remember this famous quote, and everyone always says this, it's not your girl, it's just your turn. So if you're going to any of these bars and there is a girl and you get on really well, maybe you exchange numbers and everything's going great. And then the next day she's like, where are you? Come to my bar, come see me. Maybe you go see her again. And then you're gonna have the whole spiel of, I miss you, oh, I really like you, you know, this is different. All then you're gonna think in your head that, wow, I've got so much attention from this girl. She really likes, she must really like me. And now ah, this is gonna be different. You know, Then you can just get yourself into a whole world of bother. Like I said before, I never got into any kind of relationship with a girl. I never started dating anyone from Thailand. I've been, this is my fourth time to Thailand and I've been to Thailand before for extended periods of time. So the thing is, I know how the game works. I know what they're gonna say. They almost kind of run off a script and I almost let them know that I know their game very early on. So I have my guard up quite often. And the thing is, I think that's just kind of relieved a lot of pressure off me. And to be honest, it's relieved a lot of pressure of the girls when they know that, okay, well, anyway, let's go to the next because this guy's not gonna bite. We have heard store success stories and I'm sure someone's writing a comment right now saying how they met their wife in a bar and took her out and life's all good and hunky-dory. Uh, great, it can happen, it really, really can. And I know someone who did exactly that and he's living a great life. Um, but the majority of times it doesn't, and the majority of times, uh, you know, the only person that's going to lose out in that encounter um, is going to be the guy. My main rule is to not wear your heart on your sleeve. These girls, especially the ones at the bars, they're going to give you the whole spill. They're going to give you that they miss you, they love you, and all of this, and you know, now all of a sudden the buffalo is sick at home and everything. So, and also to touch on this point as well, a fight almost break out over this scenario, and I know that it happens, uh, you know, way more than what I've even seen is that you can go to a bar and if you're talking to a girl and you're re getting on really well and everything, you're buying her some drinks, she's giving you attention, everything's great. And you're like, you know what? Yeah, I'll come back tomorrow and maybe you even let her know. 
and if you come back the next day and then you realize that she's with a customer even though she's told you over the phone i miss you oh, i like you and everything and you know you've clearly formed some connection you go to the bar the next day and she's with another girl with another customer another guy now that girl can't just like ditch that customer especially if the customer's buying her drinks and everything you can't just ditch that customer and go to you so i think what you have to understand is if you are ever getting in like i would say relationship but like if you're getting close to a bar girl know that her job is to entertain other guys and her job is to literally facilitate other guys having a really good night now if another guy is buying her drinks it's kind of her obligation for a like a short period of time uh, to at least entertain them like sit next to them you know have conversation you know in, in a lot of people just want company so if you're coming back to a bar to see a girl and she has a customer don't get annoyed at that you can't get annoyed at that that's her job you knew that it's like dating uh, a shoe shiner and then the next day you're seeing her cleaning some guy's shoes and you're like oh what the hell you knew that was her job beforehand so you can't get annoyed at that so when i see a lot of these guys who are getting close to a bar girl and then they see this bar girl with another guy they start to get annoyed and you think well you should you know that in the first place unless from day one you're saying okay i'm gonna barf on you every single day and pay you at least some sort of a wage so you're out the bar you can't do anything you can't say anything i only say this because like i say i saw a fight nearly break out over this um i've i've seen this kind of been happening but obviously not to the level of like a fight's been breaking out the bar scene is a very toxic environment like if, if any of you guys out there maybe some of you even left a comment and be like you know i don't even deal with the bars and everything like that good on you because that is that is definitely the way to go um you know i mean someone like myself like i don't really get involved too much with the girls i just go and have a laugh uh, with some of the games but uh if you're one who's heavily into the bar scene you'll realize very soon that it's a very toxic place so yeah take away from the bars now another thing that i've kind of learned and i think i don't know whatever to call it is like a lesson that i've learned um but it's just something that i've noted and i'm always going to do from this point onwards and i think you guys should do the same if you can afford it and that is to tip accordingly now i did do a previous video uh, and i said that tipping was kind of like the norm in in thailand and a lot of so many people come back and said like no you are wrong you are you're an idiot tipping is not the norm in thailand and it's like okay calm down calm down some people get passionate about so, so the wrong things but basically what i was kind of insinuating was tipping is definitely not the norm like you go to a local village in thailand and most people don't tip but what i kind of meant was like if you're on the back of a motorbike taxi and he's taking you 15 minutes for a busy city and on on bolt and he says 40 baht you know typically you're probably gonna give him a tip and and you probably should tip a little bit and that's what I'm mostly gearing towards. And this point is to kind of reiterate that fact and to tip accordingly. This is what I really should have mentioned uh, in that video is that tipping is, you know, let's say you know, there is a waitress and she's doing a really, really good job. And you know that she doesn't get paid very much. We'll get onto that in a bit. And rather than giving like the tip in that you know you receive your change in like a little booklet as such and then you open the booklet and whatever you leave in there is typically the tip that does get shared around to everyone if you want to give that individual waitress because she's done an amazing job really looked after you take that money and put it in her hand if you put it in her hand it goes to her she can keep that tip for herself if you leave it in the book it goes to everyone split evenly now, not to say that you shouldn't really split uh, evenly, but if you see one person excelling in their job, then yeah, tip accordingly. A perfect example of this is whenever I got a motorbike taxi, I always requested for a helmet. There was one time where this driver I had him very frequently, he always used to wait outside my condo because uh, my condo had various people that would always have motorbike taxis. Whenever he would come, always greeted me. As soon as he, I always put helmet please upon request, you know, whenever I take a taxi and straight away, as soon as you see me, he opens his seat, he's got a, a helmet there, he gets a little cloth, wipes it all down, uh, and then that gives it to me, make sure the strap's all tight, and then we're on our way. And he's a very, very good driver. And in that scenario, I'm not paying him 40 baht for that journey. I'm paying him 80, paying him 100, because I know that that guy, he deserves it. You know, he's gone a little bit above and beyond, and that's what I kind of mean with where I say tip accordingly. If you see someone out there that's really going like above and beyond, then yeah, a little bit of a tip goes a long way, and here is why. 
the average person out there in Thailand, like let's say, let's say uh, an average job, let's say a 7-Eleven or they're a hotel cleaner, um, or even like some of the taxi drivers or so, they're only getting between like three and 500 baht per day. That's like a daily wage. So if you see some waitress who's working in a cafe, she might be working a nine hour day and for that day, she might only get 400 baht. Yes, she might get a little few, few tips here and there, but if, like I say, if you see that person who's doing a really good job and you're like, you know what, I really wanna tip them, tip them because trust me, 50 baht is a hell of a lot, especially if they're getting like 400 baht a day. So that's the only reason I say, you know, uh, tip accordingly uh, if you can afford it and uh, it's only because it really does go a long way. And when I have done this, uh, the reception I've gotten back, like that taxi driver, whenever I tipped him quite a lot, he was so thankful. I can tell it was really, really genuine. Now here's one regret, which uh, I do regret about living in Thailand, is that I didn't explore enough. I got so kind of stuck in Pattaya. I was just there. I was just living my life day to day, getting my routines and structure and everything going, going. And, and now when I've come home, I'm thinking to myself like, wow, like, where else did I go? I went to Koh Lan. Uh, I drove a little bit around kind of the outskirts of Pattaya. And that was really it. So like when people say to me, oh, wow, you've been to Thailand for six months. How was your experience? What was your best memory I got asked recently? And I was like, I don't know, really. Just like as a collective, like living in Pattaya, like getting embraced in the culture, the food and everything was really nice. But like one specific memory, like now I just wish I did more. So if you're coming to live in anywhere like Phuket, Bangkok, whatever, explore a little bit more. Plan a little bit in your schedule to be like, right, I'm gonna be working on this day, this day, this day, doing X, Y, Z, and then like, hey, I have some free time here. Let's start planning. Go to an island that you haven't been to before. Go to see that temple or uh, the ele elephants or anything like that. Go and live these memories which you can talk about. And it's something that I, like I say, I, I wish I did. I went to Koh Lan once and it was a very kind of brief day. I didn't even get to explore the whole island. And yeah, I just wish I did more really. I think it's very easy when you're living in a certain place to just get stuck in your ways. And like, if everything's good around you and you're enjoying the, uh, the, the daytime, the nightlife, you're enjoying everything. Sometimes you can think to yourself, well, if something good, don't change it. But you know, you never know what's on the other side of a good decision. So I think, yeah, just don't get too stagnant if, you, if you're uh, planning on living in Thailand. Now, the ne next point I wanna talk about is the fact that learning a little bit of Thai will go a really long way. And I'm gonna teach you a few words and phrases uh, shortly, which hopefully may help you if you know no Thai whatsoever. Now, before I even come to Thailand, I went on Fiverr and I brought some Thai lessons one-on-one -on -one with a teacher. I will link her gig in the description. Obviously, this is not sponsored or anything like that. Um, I just think she is she was amazing. I had three lessons with her total. Um, and just in those three lessons, I learned so much. And it's really, really cheap. It's only $15 per hour. So uh, she really helped me. So I feel like, you know, I'm just gonna plug her. And hey, if you guys want a Thai lesson, then go pop ping her a message. My advice, if you ever do have one of these Thai lessons, is to get a program like OBS or any kind of screen recording program, which obviously records audio as well, and record the lesson so you can watch it back afterwards and you might miss things here and there just so you can kind of recap on stuff. But buying one or two Thai lessons before you come will help you so much. It helps you when ordering food, when getting a taxi. Uh, people just respect you a lot more. When you demonstrate that you've at least tried to learn some of the language, even if it's not the greatest pronunciation, I'm sure I am not 100% correct in my pronunciation, but I know that as soon as I try and say something, everyone will understand what I'm kind of getting at and they just appreciate it. Not only the fact that you're gonna be helping everyone else around you to kind of understand you more, it's just the fact that you're getting a bit more indulged into the culture. You, When you start speaking like a Thai, you kind of learn their little ways and how they talk and how they act. And uh, yeah, it's just really eye-opening. I think it really is special uh, to just kind of dive into that a little bit. Learning some Thai words and phrases has helped me so much, especially with like like police altercations. So like I've had it before where I've pulled over on my motorbike uh, and I've got off, taken my helmet, I was like, uh, cab, mai? which just means like, hello, like, how are you? And he's like, oh, you, you speak a Thai? I was like, I was like yeah, yeah, I, I, li I live here. And he's like, oh, don't worry, go on, on your way. And he didn't even want to look at my registration or my documents or anything because he was like, okay, this guy's clearly not on holiday. 
he I was prepared to kind of go in my motorbike uh, seat as if like to get the documents. So he was like confident. I don't even need to see. Go on on your way. So just little things like that. So let's dive into some of the little words that you should probably learn uh, that will just help you along your way if you're coming here on holiday or if you're coming to live here, but you have no experience with the language whatsoever. So at the end of each sentence or so or some words, you would say either club for a guy or ka for a girl. So for example, if I'm a guy, I'm going to say sawadee ka, which means hello. If you're a girl, you'll say sawadee ka. Whenever I say these ka or ka, you, you'll know that if you're a boy, say this, you're a girl, say that, you know. So like, like I just mentioned, sawadee ka, it means hello, which is obviously a good one to know. Another one that I just mentioned is sabadi mai. So sabadi mai, which means how are you? So by putting mai at the end, you're posing it as a question. If I just said sabadi, it means I'm okay. Sabadi mai means are you okay? Just realize I've been really slouching in this chair. Now a very important one to learn is mail cup, which basically means no thank you. Now why this is important is because you're going to be saying this a lot. Now, wherever you go there's going to be sellers, you know, someone's going to be want to cleaning your shoes or selling you trinkets or selling you food or anything or asking you for a tuk-tuk or, or a taxi or anything. By saying like no thank you, you just fit in with every other tourist. But by saying mail cup you basically are saying like, no thank you in Thai. And I've had so many, especially the taxi drivers, when I go, oh, may I cup? They go, oh, may I cup? Ah, ah, ah. And it's almost like you get a feel good feeling because they have, they're clearly showing appreciation for the fact that I'm speaking their language and I'm just being more polite about it. Like I said before, my pronunciation is probably wrong, but I've lived in Thailand for six months and I have never had one person or never had one Thai person correct me for the way I say things. So this is just my point is just that Although my pronunciation may be not maybe not correct, and maybe your pronunciation, if you're trying this, may not be correct either, in the context of where you're saying it, it will be understood. The pronunciation of how you say things is important because Thai is a tonal language, but don't stress about it too much because people will understand what you're saying. Now, another very important one to learn is map and lay, which you obviously would be map and lay up or map and lay ha which basically just means now it's okay. Now I use this all of the time. You can basically see it as just like another way of politely saying no, but telling them that like, nah, it's fine. If you're at a restaurant uh, and someone's like, uh, you know, do you want ice in your drink? Uh, you could say, oh no, map like, no, it's like, like, you're just saying no, it's okay. And lastly, uh, you've got like ch uh, chai, which means yes, and mai, which means no. Now a bonus one, if a bar girl is trying to entice you into a bar or a massage girl is really trying to kind of drag you in, uh, one thing to let them, you know, get them off your case a little bit, uh, just say, oh, I'll set lao, set lao. Um, it basically just means, you know, I've, I've already finished. I'm, I'm just kidding, but like I've used that before and it's quite funny because like they they un they get that you understand a little bit of Thai and they're always a bit kind of set back like, oh, sit lao, oh, and it's like, it's a funny little interaction. I do it every now and again uh, just to see their reaction uh, and it's always funny, you know, it's never kind of taken in a bad sense, uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just to have a little bit of banter with the girls, I guess, so use at your own caution. So overall, my experience in Thailand has been amazing. Like I said, it's the fourth time I've been to Thailand. I still love it and I am still going to return most likely next year, but we will see. But if this is all good and everything's so great, then why have I returned back to the UK? The education visa that I had was valid until August 2024 uh, and I've cancelled that. I even had my flight booked back to, the, back to Thailand for the 29th of December and I've cancelled it. So a few things really, and this is more so kind of personal to me. Um, the one thing is you guys have probably noticed that I haven't really been uploading as much at all really. And even with such a tremendous growth to the channel from starting from nothing. A big part of that is that I didn't enjoy YouTube as much as I thought I would. I enjoy the analytical side of YouTube. I enjoy trying to create like the best video for the end user, for you guys. But for one, I don't really like kind of vlogging my day. Like let's say I was gonna go do something somewhere and you know, I was gonna make a video around it or make a kind of video about some advice about Thailand. And within that video, I would go around the beach and you know, go up shopping a little bit and I'll be taking little snippets and clips and B-roll. I started to just not enjoy that. 
And when it comes to like making a new video idea, I would, you know, it would take me a long time to script write a lot of this stuff. And then when it comes down to editing on a small little MacBook Air, you know, trying to edit a full scale YouTube video took a lot of time. So for example, the Bangkok hostel video that I did, you know, that took about eight hours to edit. Now I know editing can be something that I can be outsourced, but to find someone with my style and who has my vision and to, to kind of translate that vision and stuff into some of the videos which I, I deem content like uh, that I want want on my channel uh, it will take a long time and it is costly. Video editors, video editors are costly. And also along with the YouTube, I've become incredibly lazy while in Pattaya. It is a beachside tropical town. You know, every day you can go sunbathing, you can go to the beach, the massages are cheap, the food is cheap. I just become lazy. I become unproductive. I have my other business. I have an online coaching business dedicated to getting people in shape and everything like that. And I started putting le less effort in. I started doing less content on my Instagram for the fitness related stuff. And everything just become, you know, day by day plodding along. Now, albeit I'm earning good money from my coaching, I'm earning good money from my YouTube very quickly. Now, it just wasn't enough to kind of kick me into gear because I was just around everyone else who was living that luxurious kind of lazy life. I guess a lot of people in Pattaya are kind of older, retired guys and they're just out chilling out, you know? Not very many young people who are on the grind, who are on that hustle, you know, really trying to work hard and that's something that I was trying to do but it's so hard to do that in Pattaya. Now, I think back to like last year when, you know, a lot of you guys may have seen my video of like quitting and selling everything and moving to Thailand. You might think to yourself, wow, I mean, like when I was in that zone last year, like full on monk mode, all I wanted to do was work, 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 and learn every single day, learn, 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 and provide value. Um, this was a time in my life which I really, really liked. There was not a day went past where I didn't learn something. Not a day went past where I didn't kind of move closer to my goal. Um, and yeah, I guess right, right now I, I achieved my goal in Thailand and I had a great time. And now come to pass that that goal of, you know, uh, I mean, my goal of like online coaching works better when I'm home because I'm more productive. Um, and I just think like future uh, prospects as well. Like I am thinking of delving into different kind of business areas, different business areas which I can scale a little bit more and outsource a lot more. So I have bigger aspirations in terms of business um, and also YouTube as well. I did a lot of research about YouTube and it's kind of come to light now that I'd rather be stuck in with YouTube, especially at the back end of YouTube and the analytical side of it, but not so much being the forefront of a like a vlogging or tra travel channel. That's just something which I thought I'd be interested in. I tried it, it did really well, and I just decided it's not for me. So that's one reason why I left Thailand is, is very personal to me uh, and just how I, I perceived my work ethic out there and what I thought it would be and what it was. <laughs> so you may have recently known that in one of my videos I said that I was thinking of moving to Bangkok and I said it time and time again uh, and I kind of made the decision Bangkok to be more productive um, or move home to be more productive and I think moving home and doing another year or two or whatever of like really hardcore working towards something that's bigger than what I am right now um, that's what I want to do and I feel like I'll do it better at home than I will in Bangkok. Thailand is full of distractions. It's full of uh, things you can do, everything's accessible. And I've learned that myself, I am very easily distracted and I'm very easily tempted. If I've got a friend that's like, hey, wanna come play some pool? I'm like, oh, yeah, let's drop everything. Let's go, you know, I'm very easily tempted. I've decided to come home rather than at Bangkok um, as there is less distractions here. The UK is boring. I still do not like the UK but sometimes you need a boring environment if you want to focus hard. So if you are thinking of coming to Thailand and you wanna come here to you know, knuckle down for a few months or you wanna come here for a year and get an education visa and really focus on your work, are you really coming here to focus on your work? Or oh, I say coming here, I'm in the UK. Are you really going to Thailand to focus on your work? Because you could be doing that at home. Albeit there is some of you out there, I spoke to someone recently who doesn't party or anything like that. He's going to uh, something like Koh Samui or something and just gonna knuckle down for a year and just live the beachside life with you know nice gym, nice people around and just really focus on his business. It can work, but even in a small place like Koh Samui, there is distractions everywhere and you're gonna meet friends, then friends are gonna have birthdays, they're gonna have friends of friends which invite them out for meals and stuff. And, 
you're gonna have distractions, although they don't seem like distractions initially. So uh, for someone like myself, I have like really big aspirations and I have really big kind of ambitions of where I wanna take my life. Um, and I don't need to be around distractions. So I'm back here uh, in Kent, in Folkestone, uh, in a boring town uh, where it's miserable and uh, rainy outside so I can focus. So what is happening to this channel? What is happening to Travel Glitch? I don't know. <laughs> I may do some kind of follow-up videos of maybe some advice here and there, uh, but I think this channel has, has run its course and unless I wanna kind of pick it up again in the future. So if you're thinking of subscribing, you can if you want. Whether there'll be more videos coming up, I don't know. <laughs> the thing is this channel was like uh, an amalgamation of my uh, thoughts and research over like the back end of 2022. And also into like the early part of 2023, I was looking heavily. I did so much research into YouTube. I read books on it. I listened to countless podcasts. And I guess a lot of that research is just trying to make the best video you possibly can for the end user and having like a strategy and structure around that. So this channel uh, was effectively like a test to see like, hey, like, can I do it? And especially can I do it from like a little laptop, which I've now come to learn video editing on a little laptop is horrendous. I really like my dual monitors here and my big PC. <laughs> but yeah, essentially I started this channel from scratch. Uh, I think 28th of September was my first video that I uploaded. Although I had a strategy to that on my first ever day, I uploaded three videos. So uh, there's a strategy behind that, but maybe I'll go into that uh, in, in some other videos uh, soon. I do plan to make another channel about kind of YouTube growth and you know how to start your channel from scratch and how to do it correctly and how to make be monetized very quickly on YouTube as well. I see so many people on YouTube uh, where, you know, there's a lot of people on YouTube which just make videos for the fun of it. Uh, and that's absolutely fine and you can do it as a hobby. I think the more I did the travel, travel vlog kind of stuff, the more I thought, you know, yeah, th this just isn't me. But yeah, so I, uh, 28th of September, I think I only got views on them videos of uh, like the 30th of September, but October was my first proper month. It took me like two weeks to get monetized. Uh, and within that first month, I got like 3,800 subscribers. Um, I should have run with that a little bit more. Um, and like November uh, was not as productive. Uh, it still had like some good growth. Um, but that November was the kind of month where I knew that I wasn't enjoying it as much and I was just doing content for the sake of doing content. And then I was like opted to just do live streams. That's why I was doing a ton of live streams because let's face it, if you're just doing live streams, it's just lazy. You know, doing a full scale video is way much more production, thought process, script writing, editing than it is to just, just me turn on my camera and go to the bars. You know, so I just ended up just doing a ton of live streams just just to kind of keep my viewers happy and just, just obviously to chat in real time, which is so different than like videos. But what I'm gonna do for the future is this channel may be no longer. Um, I, I may kind of stop this channel completely and I may do some stuff in the future, who knows. But I will make a channel dedicated to growth on YouTube uh, and the research that I've learned over like a, a year or so of research and the, what I've implemented in this channel and how I've grown it so quickly is what I want to compile in this kind of channel. So many people out there that say that, you know, you, you need to, you need to wait quite a long time before you start earning money on YouTube. Uh, no, no, you don't. Uh, because this was my first ever month from zero subscribers uh, and I earned 700 pounds. Following month in November was a little less, uh, but that's when I just started doing less videos. Uh, I was just doing like really live streams. But whenever you kind of hear people say that, oh yeah, YouTube, yeah, it's a long game. You have to kind of, yes, it's a long game. And, and you know, the, the the more you do YouTube, year, two year, three years, the, obviously the, the, more, the more profit that you could potentially make if you treat it as a business model. But you can earn money very quickly. And that's why I'm kind of, gearing towards potentially making a video about like how to do YouTube, how to start YouTube the right, you know, how to start a channel from scratch and, you know, not have any paid advertising, not anything like that, just trust the algorithm and have a structure and a process of how to do it. Uh, when I eventually make that channel, I will advertise on here. So if any of you guys are interested, uh, then you can kind of hop on over. But anyway, what have I got in store for my future? Uh, I'm still gonna do my online coaching, so uh, I will plug it. You know, if anyone out here is wanting to get into shape, if you wanna lose some weight, uh, if you wanna get away with all of the fad diets and all of these, you know, 
Many of my clients love what they eat. They are very rarely ever hungry uh, and they are losing weight week on week. I still have a large number of clients uh, and we are making progress consistently. I have my own app which has its own workout plans and stuff which I bespokely make for my clients uh, along with nutritional advice and just kind of looking at your whole lifestyle, looking at your job, looking at your energy output, looking at everything, every part of your life and making sure that you have systems and routines and processes in place uh, which are not only going to work and make you lose weight or gain muscle but it's something you can factor into your life and it is sustainable for the long term because you enjoy it so if anyone is interested then uh, my details are in the description but i'm still continuing with coaching i'm seeking out other business ventures on the side uh, and uh, as for youtube i may do a channel in the future uh, related to youtube growth but for this channel this may be the last video. I may do a live stream or two just to say hi to some guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, for now, I guess it's uh, me signing out. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've taken away some good advice. If you are planning on coming and living to Thailand, then uh, I have other content on that as well. You know, hey, all I'm going to say is one of my most popular videos. Uh, you can view it here if you want to. If you are going to all the bars and everything and the light I've seen, you are going to want to know the tips that I have in this video. Like I said, it's one of my, my biggest videos uh, for a reason because it has some very good advice in there. So for now, see you later, everyone. Uh, and hey, maybe catch you on the next one. Peace.